Welcome to the Unitarian Church of Los Alamos. Whoever, whoever you are, wherever you are in your life's journey, you're welcome here. I'm glad you came to our movie night. We're going to watch Prince of Egypt. And this is in connection with our, uh, our biblical scholarship and literacy class, uh, loosely, obviously, because this is a loose modern retelling of the same story. Uh, mostly it's going to be fun. We've got, we're inviting kids and stuff, but I want to do take just a minute at the beginning and a minute at the end to talk about some of the biblical stuff and the questions we have, because I believe that watching how sacred stories are retold in the modern world and in our culture is important for understanding the text itself, because the text itself is a retelling of earlier sacred stories. And so seeing how these stories are adapted and changed and made exciting and things are added to them helps us understand how the original text was changed, added to, and made exciting. And that's kind of how, how these stories came about in many ways. So I want you to kind of watch, because we've now read up through, Genesis, up through Exodus 10, as we watch this, I want you to watch and see if you notice things that are the same, notice things that are different, notice how they elaborate on this story. And when we're all done, uh, we'll also take another about 10 minutes after the movie. If you want to leave, that's fine. But, if, but for, we'll take about 10 minutes after the story, and I'll pass around the mic, and you can talk about, well, I noticed this was different. I noticed this was the same. And, and I think that'll be a lot of fun. We'll only take about 10 minutes, but we'll do that after for 10 minutes. David is here, and he wanted to say something before we started, and then uh, again when we ended, and I'll let, give him a few minutes. So um, I'll have more to say afterwards, but um, one thing I'm going to talk about is a sort of vignette about one of the actresses, and um, uh, I'll tell the story afterward, but I just wanted to uh, suggest that you uh, pay some attention to the character Yocheved, who is um, Moses' mother, um, and um, look at her and listen to her, what she sings. She's also the actress who sings the opening um, sequence, the female voice in the opening sequence, uh, Deliver Us. And I'll tell, tell uh, you know, some short stuff about her. Her name was Ofra Chaza, and um, uh, I just want to, you know, but, but you know, if, if you sit there and look at Yocheved and um, listen to how she sings, that might make what I say a little more meaningful. That's all. And I also, speaking of, of actors you might rec recognize, uh, if you if you pay attention to Star Trek, you'll probably recognize the person who plays uh, Ramsey's father, Seti. Uh, so listen to that voice and see if it sounds familiar. Uh, oh, I also want to point out there's popcorn and cookies and things in the, the, the meeting room over here. If you want to go get some, you're welcome, and I'll go back and start the movie. Thanks for coming. Okay, so for those of you who have to go, that's fine. If you want to stick around for about 10 minutes, I'm going to even pass around microphones and ask questions like, I want to know, uh, well, no, I know uh, Dave ha David has some things he wanted to say, but um, I also am curious if you noticed anything different. So we've read Exodus up to chapter 10, <coughs> and uh, two Sundays from now, we'll read the end of the Exodus story, where we'll, we'll have the Passover and the parting of the Red Sea, and we'll bring people to the Mount Sinai and bring down the law and that sort of thing. So we're almost to the end. My, cur my question is, did you notice anything that was different between what we read and what you saw? Or was it just right? Was it perfect? Is it? What were you going to say? Go ahead, Sam. He's supposed to be eaten by a fish. That's the story of Jonah. <laughs> but we're close. We'll tell the story of Jonah at some point. He gets eaten by a fish. What about, what anything else did you notice? Did you have a thought? Here. The Ten Commandments do come after the crossing. So he takes them all to the mountain where he met them. And, uh, all right, anyone else want this? 
The other question I had was, did you, did, was there anything you really liked about it or that, you, that, that bothered you? Were you bothered halfway through? I was. What bugged you? Anything? Nothing? Come on up, David. Why don't you? Well, there's much in it that's horrible. And it should bother you. <laughs> you know? That's what this means. I think I, I enjoyed the way they, um, they framed the, the death of the firstborn in Egypt, specifically by putting Pharaoh there in front of the mural of the, the slaughter of the Israelite children with his son sitting at the bottom. That, that is in clear, that's clearly intended in the text, that, that, that the death of the Egyptians is a, is a punishment for the, the death of the Israelites. Uh, the, the, what I thought was interesting is the way um, they tried to rework the morality of the tale to match our morality. So, for example, the, he says, why are you here? I'm here to, because no one should be, a, a civilization should not be built on the backs of slaves, right? That's a modern sensibility that is not found in the text. Um, from the text perspective, the, the, is, the, the slavery is immoral because it's... Um, it's, it's uh, inappropriately implemented, right? I mean, slavery should happen if you, if you capture somebody in war or if they are in debt. It's, it's, a, it's a price for, for being in debt. You work off your, your debt. Uh, and the Israelites hadn't done any of those things, so they didn't deserve to be slaves. But the text says God's there to deliver them because he promised Abraham. It's, it's fulfilling a promise to Abraham that, that he does all this, not because God hates slavery. So, so you notice how the morality has been pulled forward uh, from, from the morality of the text into our morality, which is what we do when we retell these stories, right? We, we, um, and I think that's really important to watch because uh, in, in Hebrew, and, John, uh, and David will talk more about this, I think, but in Hebrew, in uh, Jewish tradition, it's called midrash. It's the idea you take a story and you, you retell it creatively to, to, uh, within the morality of your day. And that tradition is really old. And in fact, I would argue that the text itself is probably Midrash on earlier traditions. We'll talk a little bit about historicity. But one of the, at least, theories is that there was a small group of, of escaped slaves who brought this story forward, who believed that you know, God had somehow helped them escape. And then the story was expanded on, just like this story expanded on the original story. And it grew, and it grew, and it grew until you get this really big, elaborate and beautiful story with full of miracles and parting waters and snakes, sticks turning into snakes. And, um, but it's the, the, the process of Midrash that, that turns that initial story of the escaped slaves into this big, you know, larger than life thing that we now have in front of us. And so seeing us doing the same thing today, I think, is important because it, it gives us an idea of where these stories came from in the first place. But, uh, David, did you want to tell your well, story? Well, I, I don't think I can actually add anything to what you said about Midrash. I think it's perfect. Um, I did want to say something. Um, I went back and, and watched some parts of the film before, you know, last I, this was last night. And um, I wanted to tell what's really sort of a vignette um, that's not very connected to the, to the story of the Exodus, but it's connected to the story of the movie. Um, the actress who voices Yocheved and sings her songs, and also whose voice is the last one you hear, was the great Israeli singer Ofra Chaza, who was very beloved in Israel she was the most famous Israeli singer internationally. Um, and uh, one thing I noticed last night is the face of Yocheved is modeled on Ofra Chaza. It's obvious if you see pictures of her. Um, she was an incredibly accomplished singer. Um, there were, I think, 22 translations uh, done for the movie uh, into other languages. And she sang the songs you heard here in English in 18 of those languages for the movie. <laughs> she, 
she normally sang, uh, you know, just typically in English, Hebrew, Arabic, and French. Uh, that was you know, just part of her normal singing. And she passed away just a couple years after the movie was made, very tragically, at the age of 41 of complications of AIDS. Um, so if at some point you want to look up Ofra Chaza, H-A-Z-A, um, and uh, look at a picture or maybe listen to her music, um, I recommend it. Um, she sang in many styles. She began singing in the Yemenite styles and the Yemenite songs of her family because she was from a Yemenite family um, and uh, went on to sing a lot in um, various forms of pop. I don't know how you feel about pop, but if there's any pop you're likely to like, it's likely to be Ofra Chaza, as well as continuing to sing in uh, traditional uh, Yemenite songs in both Hebrew and Arabic. So, by, by the way, if, if anyone doesn't know David, you're missing out. So, this is David Zagetti. He's our uh, local resident scholar of, of uh, Talmud and uh, and uh, uh, works at the lab uh, with me, sort of vaguely connected to me, not directly. Uh, and he's also Jewish, so he's um, he's the person to ask if you have questions about any of the the, the biblical texts. He's he knows what he's talking about usually. He can often add a lot of really important things. So if you don't know David, you should. Um, the other thing I thought was really interesting in, the, in this rendition was the relationship between Ramses and Moses. For example, we don't know that it was Ramses. There's no mention of the pharaohs or the name. They chose a specific place in Egyptian history to put it. Uh, and and uh, you know, Moses is, is uh, the daughter of Pharaoh. One of Pharaoh's daughters adopts Moses. There's no indication that it's Ramses' mother who adopts Moses. There's no indication necessarily that that, uh, in fact, it's, it's Pharaoh's daughter, not Pharaoh's wife, who adopts, Ram, who adopts Moses. And, uh, and, and there's no indication that he's, he's, you know, grows up as the brother of the Pharaoh, that, you know, that could have easily put him as the cousin. And so there's obviously a lot of, a lot of uh, license taken, but we don't know. And so you can pick anything you want. And they cho make, made a choice, and it created a very beautiful relationship between the two where you can see how Moses, you know, in this version, you know, egged Ramses on and then Ramses had to be in charge <coughs> and, and live up to his name and that, that put him at odds, which also brings up another interesting difference um, in the text. In this case, it's Moses, it's Ramses, I'm sorry, that brings this about, right? You know, it's, just, it's your stubbornness and pride. And of course, in the Hebrew text, it says God hardened Pharaoh's heart. So for the first few plagues, Ramses hardens, or Pharaoh, we don't know who he is, hardens his own heart, and then in the last few, God hardens his heart for him. And the implication in the text, which is again part of an, a more ancient sensibility of justice, is that God intends to punish the Egyptians for what they've done to the Hebrews. And so to punish them, he has to get them in the place where he needs them to, so that they can, justice can, can befall them. Right? So they... They kill the Israelite children, so he kills their children. They uh, enslave the Israelites, so he lets the Israelites leave with their gold and silver, which also is left out of this version. And, and he gets to the Red Sea, and because he, they had drowned the Israelite children, he's, God's got to drown them in the sea. And so he hardens Pharaoh's heart all the way along. And again, from a Christian kind of later perspective, that, that, that bothers a lot of Christian interpreters because they don't want to see that, right? For them, it's, if, if you're punished, it's because you have sinned, right? And so, and so they struggle with that text. It's a very common text kind of to struggle with. But again, in the ancient sensibility, this is an act of justice. And so God pulls them to that point so he can enact the justice that they deserve because of what they have done. And so it's, a, it's, a, it's a, an, an example, I guess, of an eye for an eye sort of, of response from God to what the Egyptians did. And that's kind of the intent of the uh, God hardened Pharaoh's heart passage, which again, this rendition changes. So we have another example of kind of pulling an older text into modern morality. And then we have examples in the biblical text where older stories with older moralities were pulled into later biblical moralities. And then we pulled them into our moralities and we retell and tell these stories each time changing them and trying to make sense of them in the way we think of what's moral and what's immoral. Um, there's a lot in it that's immoral from our perspective, right? Uh, and so 
that's, that's what happens when you face a, an ancient text. You know? but go ahead, Chuck. Do you want to pass the mic back to Chuck? What year, what year was this made? What year was Prince of Egypt made? I don't actually know. I think it's 98. 98 or 99. Yeah, I remember it coming out and going to watch it as, I think, a college student. But I, I, was, I was, remember deeply moved. And I still, I sat in the back of the, of the, the room today crying during the whole movie just because I remember what it was like to watch this movie the first time I watched it. Uh, you remember when, and there's also that scene, I remember talking to, it must have been before that because I think I was even on my mission of talking about it uh, with one of my companions, and he said he didn't like it because it, it turned all the miracles of God into Moses and his magic staff which made me wonder if he'd ever read the Bible, <laughs> because that's clearly what, it, what it's like in the text, right? But he seemed to think that was an extra textual flur, uh, flourish, but, but no, that, that's, that's how it's told in the story, right? I, I thought I'd say something about this question of wrestling with the horror of much of what happens. Um, and there is a um, rabbinic story, I don't know how old it is, but it may very well well, go back to the Talmud, um, that um, uh, when the Israelites have crossed the Red Sea and the Egyptians are drowning, uh, the angels come to God and um, say, uh, we should sing hymns to your glory. And God is supposed to have said to them, uh, my children are drowning in the sea and you want to sing hymns? So people have been wrestling this, with this for a very long time, right? It's not just Christians. Uh, and a lot of this goes back well into antiquity. Um, you know, even at the time of the Hellenistic and Roman empires, we know that there was discomfort with a lot of this. Um, Thank you all for coming. If you have any other thoughts or questions, come come talk after, and we'll we'll chat. And if you're interested, I'm curious if I if we did uh, another one of these and did the Ten Commandments with you know the old old thing that I I don't even think I've even seen it before I was even born with Charlton Heston. If we did Ted Ten Commandments, who would come? I'm just curious if that's. I know. So it, it's interesting to to see multiple tellings of the same story because you can see all the various ways you can put it together and, and try to make sense of it. So I'd love to do a couple of these. So, um, you know, when, when, we did, uh, when we did the story of British mythology and we talked about the Holy Grail, we, we showed Indiana Jones and Raiders of the Law uh, and, and uh, the Last Crusade just because it, it, it shows a modern take on the story. And so I think it's worth seeing these things in culture Again, because when we see the stories retold, we kind of find out where the stories came from to begin with. Because these are tellings of retellings of retellings of older oral traditions that are older, right? So um, each time you see this retelling, you kind of see where it comes from and how it works. So I'd, I'd love to do that sort of thing. So. Anyone else? All right. Thank you. Thank you. I, I didn't make the movie. I just showed no, I'm so. <laughs> Oh, thank you. So uh, it, next. Next, uh, not next Friday, but the Friday after will be uh, another one of our classes on Buddhism. We're going to talk about Mahayana and uh, Theravada and kind of the origins of the, the first major split in Buddhist tradition. And we'll go through some of that history. And then that following Sunday, we'll, talk, we'll read the Exodus up through chapter 15. So from 10 to 15, if you want to read ahead, and that's where we get to part the Red Sea and, and, uh, and sing the song that they all sing at the end, which is actually taken from the biblical text. Uh, which is where they pulled that Hebrew part that, that comes up there at the end. And, and so that's, that's in that passage, too. We'll, we'll read through that uh, that Sunday. So see you then.